I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 when my father and brother and I were at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. Please note that this meeting is being made available to the public through an audio recording which will be used to ensure an accurate record of proceedings produced in the minutes of the meeting. All comments made in open session will be recorded. Um, we start the meeting tonight with some sad news. Uh, we learned over the weekend that one of our planning board members has been a member of the planning board since 2000, has passed away. We'd like to, um, Brian, was, Brian Van Riper died this weekend. He was someone who was active in town meeting, active in local politics, a member of the Democratic Town Committee. Um, he helped improve the town in many ways through his work, including with the Bas Summer Basketball League and the center courts and the push to develop an independent school system um, or independent high school. He was um, on the planning board since 2000, as I mentioned. He was chair of the Community Preservation Committee and he also served on the Affordable Housing Committee. He's done a lot of work for the town over many, many years that he's raised his family here. So just thought if, if anybody wants to say anything uh, independently, for me, he was someone who really helped me learn a lot about this board. I find that we would frequently turn to Brian and say, what do you think? Um, what are we missing? What, what's in the regs? Um, because he knew them so well and spent so much time with them. So I know he will be sorely missed by this board, I know he'll be missed by his family, and I know he'll be missed by the town. Uh, if anyone wants to add anything, I would like us to... Um, yeah, I'd like to add something. I sat with uh, Brian on the Master Plan Committee years ago. It was an exhaustive job that we did on that committee, and he provided tremendous leadership. Um, also sat with him on the community center task group for one or two times ago. We got a lot of work done. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't, it, it, it didn't move on, but we did a lot of work on that committee and he was passionate about the needs of the town. He was passionate about Pembroke. Um, and his work with the CPC, I think, was enormously important. Um, there were a lot of projects in town that got done because of Brian's leadership and vision. Um, so people would be deaf from the rest. He cared very much about the town of Denver. He was also behind the creation of the Center Protection District. There were so many things that he did uh, to make Pembroke a better place to live that um, he, he will really be missed. You know, I know personally, <coughs> I find that the loss of money is going to have a big effect on this board because Brian's laws are zoning. And our planning board rules and regulations was inexhaustible. Uh, anytime we had a question regarding zone, we were told about it. And he was going to be very famous. Uh, he was a great person, and once again, I echo what Andy and, and Becky have said, that uh, we were going to be very famous. I just want to just say that one of the things that I yelled me a lot in the, the time I was on here from the day I walked in, knowing absolutely nothing. Um, he was always willing to like, you know, sit next to you and kind of whisper like what was actually going on and stuff like that. And one of the things I really admired about him was he was always thinking about how to put pieces of land together so that, you know, we develop this green space in Pembroke and a trail system and then um, always thinking about that. Yeah. You know, I've um Brian will be there for the the board room for I've been here twenty years and he's been at eighteen and um, I also sit on the CPC uh, committee with him, and uh, he's done a lot for the town. And uh, you know, undoubtedly, uh, it would be very difficult to replace, if ever being able to be replaced, because he he was never thought of himself. He was always thinking of the town and how to make it better. 
So uh, with that, I leave the sympathy to the family. <coughs> I just ask that we take a moment of silence and sort of um, recognize them in whatever way we personally have to do so. So now we have to get on with the work of the board that he cared so much about. Um, yes, no, no on um, no. the first piece of business before us tonight is a discussion about a construction of a canopy yeah. with solar panels in the parking mm -hmm. area of the King Collision Center at 38 Shusett Street. It's solar. Thank you. Tell us what's up. Thank you. Um, so thank you for giving us some of your time this evening. Really kind of talk more about the yeah. available for questions you might have. But it's pretty much like you had suggested. We're um, looking to put up a canopy over a section of the existing blacktop pavement in front of King Collision. But the reason we're here before you is that um, the business be zoned, we understand there's a 60 foot setback, and we would be working within that space. Um, we're not disturbing the land, it's already been blacktopped. And in the space that we're looking at working, uh, we would still be further away from the, uh, the street than an existing structure there, the signage that's already in the front of that property. So for that reason, we think that it is uh, less invasive. Um, this would be a canopy that covers the entire section of parking, 65 feet of parking covered by 66 feet of canopy. Uh, and it will start at the edge of the current blacktop area and then move back towards the building. The state uh, clean energy center, as well as uh, other agencies, view canopies as better uses for uh, solar than clear cutting existing green space or covering up space that might otherwise be used by other purposes. Um, and there's an expectation from King Collision that uh, this space will always be used for parking. So it's not like they're expecting to expand in that area and they just conclude that we can do that. With me today is Matt King from King Collision and Fred Harris, the uh, principal of Point Solar Energy also. <coughs> yeah, that's my question. Is I don't, I don't personally, I don't know that I have any objection to it going over the parking there, but I think that I don't think we have the power to allow another structure to go up in that space without um, the ZBA granting variance, um, just because of the way the bylaw reads. And I went back to check it myself. But given the reading of the bylaw, I think that this would be one of those cases where you'd have to go to the ZBA and argue that it's um, you have to get it worthy of the variance. Really. The solar bylaw is saying it's still not going to get us back our front yard. I think, the solar, I think the solar bylaw is only mainly applicable to so like solar fields, ground mounted, so large solar arrays. Although maybe it has something about it. Well, that's kind of what this is. Well, it's not the usual to trigger that. This would be solar on the canopy, or be on the roof of the canopy. This would be on the top of the canopy, right? And it's relatively small. On a residential, and I don't know about this commercial. Actually, let's look at this. It says, solar facilities shall be allowed on parcels of land in any zoning district except center protection district, wherein all solar installations are subject to site plan review and approval. Um, as of right means that the development may proceed without the need for a special permit variance, amendment waiver, or other discretionary approval. Projects cannot be prohibited, but can be reasonably regulated. But the key is you're building a structure. Yeah. But there's, yeah, the key is the key. You're building a structure to support the solar. Therefore, there's a setback to build the structure. 
And if the canopy, structure existed, you wouldn't have an issue. And the canopy's purpose is also to provide shade and so forth. So well, it makes all kinds of sense. They just wonder if there's an exemption in there under the solar. If it existed, if the, if the canopy existed, we wouldn't have to have the discussion. It's getting the, the what does it say about ground mount? Uh, ground mounted solar facility, it just defines it. On the bottom of page 59, it briefly mentions roof mounted solar facilities. But this isn't that. You don't have a roof you're building the structure for it. Mm -hmm. Let's just mount it. <laughs> so there's a, a setback variance that would be required here. I think that I think it's in the ZBA to give grant relief to build the structure that will support the solar panels. And then because you have to look at it completely different, it's not like the structure is a, sol a, a solar array on the dump that's that's ground level. You, you have to use it as a carport. All right, because it's not designed that way. You're building, I think it says in the, no, but you're the building, solar regulations that, that you have to design the basis to you know, carry so it. What so it said, oh, we're putting in a solar field, but it's going to be under a two-story building, over a two-story building. It's, it's not going to affect the drainage, because you've already, it's already paved it, underneath. It, it, it has to, it's all it has to do with, is it paved underneath? Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All it has to do with, all it has to do with the question. I thought the only real issue is the structure itself. That's all. But yeah, just just a bear was probably right. and then and then you still have to come back here for site plan. Right. Yeah. It shouldn't be a I don't think complicated it should be a site plan. Yeah. 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 Uh, that might happen as well. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, yeah, we'll just look at every we'd like, we'd, we'd like to have a canopy. We have a canopy uh, overhang in our Plymouth location. It's nice for customers. It's convenient. It's much rain. Rain. So if we could, since we have that, those nine parking spots in the front of the building, it's a perfect spot to build a canopy there. And, you know, it'd be great to build a canopy and then have the solar benefit as well. So yeah. that's, that was the idea of the project. Right. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that we have a problem with it, mm -hmm. except for the fact that it is, Within the fifty foot setback, that is the Is it not fifty foot? No, twenty five feet. Twenty five feet. Yeah, I, I don't. Well, know. It, 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 it may not even be that, and maybe maybe in the maybe closer to the state layoff than you even imagine. Yeah, that's a state house. Yeah, it's a state house. You're you're Yeah, it looks like you're being very close to yours. Um, so, I mean, obviously we can't give legal advice, but our, our read of it is that you would need the zoning board's approval before you come over to us for approval. Um, and, uh, so like I said, I don't, think that, I don't think we have an issue with it. It's just a question of our jurisdiction and whether we can grant the, um, the, the approval. Unless someone else has something they want to raise for them to think about in the meantime. As long as it's over a paved area, the existing paved area, you don't have any issues with drainage, right? You have to put a change in here. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, I don't, I mean, yeah, it looks great. It looks great. It's. I mean, you know, if we, if we, we would, it would be fairly easy if we had, we didn't have that setback before. Okay. But we do. So, so we're, we're going to have to send you over there. I'm sorry. Go ahead and take care. All right. Take care. Have a good night. So you want to put them down along the side there? <laughs> sorry. Unless you want to put one down along the side here. Uh, you know, they're uh, actually looking at the customers when they pull in to pick up their cars and things like that when they go over the damage, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, we looked at the side too. Yeah, 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 Solar installations. I'm hoping we see more of them because it's a great use of covered ground space. Thank you. Thank you.
Um, so at 715, we need we have a continuation of a public hearing for the proposed night plan number SP1-18, located at 92 Washington Street and 5 dash 15 Schuster Street at the intersection of Washington and Schuster Street for the new gas station with 10 pumps and 3,200 square feet convenience store for Irving Oil that was continued from April 9, 2018 at the uh, request of the applicant um, based on the timing of the traffic engineer's report and their ability to respond to the traffic engineering report. We're requesting to continue this public hearing to April 30th at uh, yes, um, April 30th at 8 o'clock. At 8 o'clock p.m. Does anyone want to move to continue the public hearing? I'll make a motion to move that. Second. 8 o'clock is going late. We're starting at 6.30, but that's okay. I think we have a bunch of things on the table. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um, so now we're moving on to routine administrative matters, and we can take your question about getting a building permit set up for. Yes. So, um, wait, go ahead. Yeah, so this is um, the Emily Lane Pembroke. Uh, so, I'm sorry, this is the John Hanna subdivision down there. Yeah, he's on Precious. I Precious the other one, John Hanna was here last July. You guys had signed that Hanna plan. Um, the lot was released. There's an additional lot that I had a contract that I didn't purchase. Um, so my question was, I think the last time you guys just signed up for the building permit, so I thought, um, I think it was an A and R plan that was already endorsed. I thought that would come and just. But here's before we before we do that, uh, is everything? How many lots are left in that in that subdivision? None. None. So the lot that got so, released to you, have we signed off on the yes. release of that lot? Yeah, this is, this is, this is money, this, I guess there's, there's money, as you guys have enough money as well, more than enough, I guess, to finish the but, lower. But we but still need to release the lot. Did we actually vote to release that lot? Yeah, it was, it was released prior to getting the A&R. Correct, but here's the issue. Okay. One, the planning board does not like to get into the idea of finishing the roadway. Yeah, of course. All right? Yeah. So... And then to spend the money, we'd have to go after him after the houses are already built. So where are we on that road? Yes, well, why don't you give us an update on the road? Where That's are we on the road? road? Do we have an engineer who's following this at all? So the road, it's been kind of, I guess the project was at a standstill for a while. Um, and this lot here um, actually was never part of the original approval of the subdivision. This lot, which is why like the ANR is off of the subdivision. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. So it was it was uh, subdivided off of lot four, um, and we right. should we should have right. right. yeah. Matt, did you just pull the file for Emily Lane? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. So a majority of this lot, this is this. So the so the ANR was signed off on. Um, and I just, I guess, you know, in order, to, in order to complete the role, the last house, the last house has to be, um, you know, has to be completed. Then they need guys, then they need to finish the role. So well, first off, what we, we need to do is probably to send a uh, engineer out there mm -hmm. to see what is done on the road, what needs to be completed, what hasn't been done. To justify how much money we actually hold, all right, and if it's capable of actually repairing the road. Now, did you find a lot or some division? Just a lot. I don't. I have nothing to do with subdivision. Okay. So I'm just purchasing a lot. But you bought the lot from John. I bought it. Yes. The trust. The head of the head of the head of the head of the Yes. Part of the subdivision. Yes. You. Well, you guys. You guys. So essentially, you said it wasn't part of the subdivision. Well, no, 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 he has two lots, okay. right? So you bought the lot that you're here on tonight that was part of the A&R, that was not part of the original subdivision, and you bought another lot from John Hanna. Am I right? Yeah, it was, so essentially there was lot four that was part of the subdivision. Um, I was here in July, and um, you had signed off on the, um, on the, on lot, on lot four. You guys had checked. Um, so, oh, this isn't the first one. This isn't the end. 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 This isn't the end
I mean, it is the I mean, plan, but it's not the one that we yeah. Yeah, we yeah, I, I can put it in our yeah. This went through several iterations. This is been yeah, and that's yeah. The, I don't know if this is the uh, this is actually the approved plan or, or fair. No, it's not. But I can find the NRG. What do you remember? Was it you said it was last summer? The ANR um, on. Um, we got to look, we gotta look at the plan. That we you see. know, I, I guess my question is, I mean, this is just kind of administrative matters. I wonder if we should put this on as an agenda item for the whole file in front of us. Because, because it, this, the call is that doesn't exist on the original. This, yeah, that might be an issue. This one? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, that's in case the right. Yeah, exactly. Because of the solar field. Yes. So that's in that's in Kingston, so it stops, so it stops here. Um, this exists. Right. Um, Who we show up? Wait. So you're on lot four. So, uh, so, yeah, so, so it was lot four, you know. So this was the lot four was released by Hunter. Okay. Um, and essentially what happened was, is that lot, uh, this was uh, subdivided, because there was many solar panels in there. This was essentially subdivided right here, all like this. And um, again, this is released. And then, so the portion of lot four that was in Pembroke was signed off on A and I. And then the, the back portion, seventy percent of it, is in Kingston. I want to. I, I want to say that I'm not about. Yeah, I don't know. Yes, I do. Yeah. You remember signing off in Kingston? Yeah. yeah, Kingston signed off, and Pembroke signed off. Um, so Pembroke signed off, and one of Kingston's. I think we should come in to talk about it, right? Yeah, I think we did, and then we signed the subdivision. Well, the problem is, is that the, the and we made a lot of money. Location of the bedroom is in play. The, the house, one hundred percent in Pembroke. That was part of that was part of the deal. That was part of the deal with um, with Kingston. The house, the house was one hundred percent in Pembroke. All accessory dwellings <coughs> because they would have had to service it. Yeah, I mean that's that's part of the law. Although, yeah. we, yeah, although given that the utilities are going to be with the water looping in there, too. Uh, the they, they did finish the water looping, but the issue would have been if the bedroom was in a case then, all right, you, you would have taxes in two, well, you're going to have taxes in there, but you would have on the residential, <laughs> and you would have, if, the, if they sleep in a case then, the taxes go. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, that's 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 40,000 square feet. How do we get two lots? Yeah. So essentially what happened was back here in Kingston. Uh, yeah, maybe it's something new to uh, Because of the setback. On the future agenda. Because that's a big, it's like then. two or three different So spots. the area that's leased back to CEC. Um, we have a come back here, so there's an area picked up. Do you, do you have I a little bit Yeah, I do. It's a lot. I think. Yeah, yeah. I have to double check, but I think it's like 100,000. Yeah, my fear is this. And it came, came back. Um, How are you going to be fun? building a room? The frontage is in yeah. the frontage is. Tyler Nims actually has been uh, uh, sort of vaguely keeping track of this. He asks me every once yeah. in a while. So, so essentially, the house, everything's in Pembroke. No, no, no. But frontage 150 feet of front of the lot. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I just want to see how they cut that up to get well, the frontage. Like I said, the A and R's were already endorsed. But that A and they were already, I mean, I mean, I mean, the A and I's were already endorsed by Pembroke. Now, if you're, if you're something that provided that after the fact. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't see any record of the A and I. Yeah, I, I, I thought you made that yeah. copy of file. I have a copy of it. Um, yeah, I'm going to show it. So, uh, yeah, you, we're going to see the plan, because, uh, and we we'll probably have to look at the plan. Is this the last lot? Yeah, this is the, this is, this is, the, so, when you, you guys, released all the lots? Yeah, when you guys gave me the release, of, yes, when you guys gave me the release on lot four, um, you know, you were checked, and, and all, all the lots have been released, and I think you had John Hanna come back in here, and give it, you guys didn't have your engineers do additional inspection, and you got additional funds for him on completion of that roadway, and that's when you would, that's when you would release all the lots. Uh, again, I'll, which we did, we got yeah. checked check them. Yeah. Okay. So now, so now, now we still need to we still need to see what's that's what we got. But now all of a sudden there's another lot. Oh, was it like a hundred and sixty thousand? Yeah, it's 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 far it's far more than 
It's I don't, it's the forty percent. Yeah, but we still don't want to build the road, even if we're we not, have the money we're to not build the road. No, they're not building the road. What I'm saying is, is that he keeps on my he's on my butt because he's like oh, John. Yeah, because you know, I, well, yeah, John he has all that money. He has a lot. He has a lot of money tied up. Tied up. He's like, I want to get this road finished. I want to get this road finished. And and, and so he he wants this house done and sold because he has a lot of money tied up. Right. With it. So we just have to make sure that we just have to make sure that. Well, yeah, we gotta get we gotta get the, we gotta, get, up, we gotta get the subdivision plan we signed yeah. out here. We right. gotta get the engineer out here to take a look at it. We, we did have some issues with the street trees. I could have sworn it was a five house subdivision at the max. I don't know. I don't know. But we, we, there was some street tree no, issues yeah. there. Also, the the cul de sac island. There was an issue with the trees going in there or something yeah. that we talked about. Do you have a picture of the lot that you're going to do? Yes, I have the A and R for either one. Do you have a picture of it? I do. I just didn't bring it tonight because I figured it was just more of a formality than anything else I would have brought it. Um, I do have the uh, the signed endorsed plan from Kingston and Pembroke. Um, on that <clears throat> is the lot. I can bring that in with the other. Um, well, that's kind of nothing to do with the roadway. No, it's nothing to do with the roadway, but only in the sense that. I, I understand what you're saying. It's nothing well, to do with us to do with the moment. Yeah. yeah. Well, what we'd like this to see, we what we'd like to see I think, was the creation of the lot. Well, I know the lot. He's going to build the house there, and then they're going to have to finish the road. Right. Well, that's correct. Yeah. And we want the road finished. So we want to make sure that. I mean, listen. With, with, I hate to say it, but with Mr. Hannah, I want to make sure. Right. Well, he wants his money back. I honestly, the last thing I remember him no, coming here was yeah. talking about yeah. it. Yeah. I don't yeah. ever remember us. He'll finish right. the road, but we have to have the inspections done. Right. Okay, I'm not sure it's that to do just All right. The bottom line is sure that. that to do this okay, now. right now we sound right. like we're going in circles, though, because we right. don't really know what the situation right. is. I think we just need this so we need, we need to put this on an agenda item, and we need to have the file in front of us with the plans. What we need to know is that all the lots have been released. Yes. I, I think Matthew oh. has the official file. We'll get that file in front of us with it on the agenda. This project's like deja vu. And then we won't be <laughs> sort of going around in circles asking the questions. Yeah, no, I, no, I understand. Um, I understand. I, and believe me, I want, you know, I want before I close anything, I want to make sure that, you know, because I have the same feeling that, you know, that you guys probably have. But um, so, again, I want to, you know, I'm not involved in that road completion. I'm only, I, I, built, I built the house next door. Right. And as a matter of fact, I'm building it myself and living it. Okay. So uh, I was about to say you don't want anybody to come back and go after you because things aren't done the way you promised them, but you well, can't really well, sue yourself, can you? Well, no, well, <laughs> well, well, by the same token, I'm going to be living there, so I want to make sure that the joint hand can please that little property. Yeah. Right. Trees that are dead. Trees that are dead. I want to make sure that we play. Right. Yeah. So my so my interest and your interest. If I'm saying. I'm the same. I'm the same. So I'm not. You know, so yeah. I'd rather do finish on a delay. A delay is not going to hold you up. Only if Jordan Hannah tries to back out of the deal or something like that, we'll say. It seems like if the lot's been released, I think he wants well, the lot. Right now we're talking so, in what ifs. Yeah. We need yeah. the file in front of us right. if we're going to have something that we can see. That we yeah. can and see we that we can vote. Because I should do it in the stop job, finish in the road, right? Well, no, but we don't want him finishing the road if he's going to have trucks moving yeah. and, and equipment moving over that to take and build a home. I mean, we've waited this long. I mean, it's been what, 12 years? <laughs> or longer. Uh, so uh, I think we can wait a few more weeks yeah. here to see. But my point is if it's an older existing road with some of the four maze on it, if we have an argument all the time. This well, one we got a subdivision. But that's why I always hate four maze in a subdivision. Yeah. I prefer to do it as a modification yeah. in a subdivision. Well, that's why I wanted to know how many. One, well, that's why I wanted to know how many lots and how many lots were released. Well, that is this last lot each but, part but, of the subdivision. See, normally we only do that on the big front that has frontage on a road other than the subdivision. That's why I want to see the A and R that was created inside the subdivision, because normally they're in the front. See, my view is that, you know, an A&R, when the road's not yet built and it's still under progress, is not the best. Well, that's, that's, that's no. the question. How did it become created? It's, it's not accepted, right? Like, it's not a right. legit road. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, all right, so we just need to put it on the agenda mm -hmm. um, for an upcoming meeting. It should only take, like, 15 minutes, I think, if we had all the data in front of us. Right. And we could do something pretty quickly. Does is it, is it have to, it doesn't have to be, um, Advertising? No, no, no. No, no, no. It's, it just has to be, it's not a public hearing. Okay. It's just, it needs to be an agenda item. An yeah. agenda okay. item okay. Because we're going to make a decision on something. Right. Is, is it possible? Right. Um, I know you said they meet the 30th. I don't think a full agenda with 30th for you. Um, I guess it's up to the board, but I think we can try. 
Do you have anything before the eight? Eight, eight hour? Eight, uh, before eight o'clock? Yeah, we should have that public hearing after at eight. Okay. Yeah, we've got a bunch of stuff, but there might be. I have to double check. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Before. So, I'm, I'm like, sorry. Yeah, it's my closing for the thirty, but I'll push that off. Um, and, you know, he's kind of shifty, so I just. Well, we seem to protect everybody, especially with Tom. That's our job. Yeah, I understand. Not that there's probably anything wrong with this, but you know, it's been so long, I just want some credit. Yeah, no, I absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah, this I'll, is the problem with old projects, right? Yeah, absolutely. In general, it's. Yes, yeah, we've. Yeah, we're old. No, I. I just, <laughs> you can yeah. offer you. I mean, that's no, I was going to get tired. So, would you I slide in case you can't find the AR. Uh, give me the copy, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, you can, but it should be. We should, we should have it. We should have the whole yeah. packet for this. We That's should, yeah. Files, yes, I because we signed the subdivision plan. Right. There would have been minutes. A year and a half ago. There maybe. would have been minutes. There would have been all types of things. And yeah. voted on it. And, the yeah. whole, and whole some of these issues that you have were discussed. Okay. I just, I just need some, you know, a refresher. Yeah. If I had to guess, that's probably going to be quite a camp with a bigger chunk of money. Yes. Um, was and, that, and it was yeah. a lot of back and forth to get a check in. Well, that was, first off, that was to get any of those lots. At um, least, if you remember. Yes. We had another developer in to do, he was going to take it over, was going to yeah, build it yeah, over. Moving around the lots. And, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah There's a yeah, lot of I know that stuff. So, no. No, we just want to finish it. Okay. It became needlessly complex. Yep. And, and then the market crashed. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't crash before. So. Uh, yeah, I know, I, know, I know it crashed before that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. No, it, was, it, it became a complex project. Yeah. Right. I, I heard the history. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, thank you for your time. All right. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Um. Okay. This is still making its way around. Do you have a, yeah. This is our opportunity to catch up on some routine matters because our next couple of meetings are going to be very busy. Um. Can we start by approving the minutes for April second? And I'll say as a note, as a side note here, that we. We are being encouraged to approve minutes even if um, everyone, not being encouraged, we're being told that the AG's new regs as of the fall require us to approve minutes within 30 days, even if um, the people at the current meeting were not at the prior meeting. So they consider it an administrative ministerial act to approve the minutes. Regardless of, regardless of the substance or the content. I think it's the committee we're just saying yes, these are. You're saying if you weren't there for minutes, you can still vote. You can approval. still vote the approval. The question I have, but my what I would suggest we adopt as a practice <laughs> is that we first say anyone who is present at the April 2nd meeting who has any comments that the rest of the board should hear about the April 2nd minutes. So I think that first we should hear from anyone who actually was at the April 2nd meeting and then the remainder, yeah. then the whole board can take a vote yeah. on it. Um, yeah, I guess the, the attendant material here is a little bit, but maybe having it attached to the minutes is okay. Um, because there's a lot of inconsistencies in it, there's a lot of false accusations in it. Um, there, there are pictures of projects that are not relevant to the project at hand. Um, I think what we had said, though, was that rather than reading these documents to the record, we would append them okay. as well yeah, as that's, submitted that's, to the yeah. board without right. the board taking a position on the accuracy of the material. Well, I think that we want to make sure that we state that without going to battle for the accuracy of the material, especially with the inaccuracies. Presented to us. I think that should be it should be stated in the minutes, or doesn't it? Yeah, it was stated. I mean, it was stated in the yeah, hearing. Like I made a motion of the letter from residents of Gorham Ave, Fairview Ave, Crash Ave, be included in the minutes. Yeah, actually, I think you made the motion. Yeah. 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 So I'm just saying that I think within the minutes there were we did ask indications to uh, add it. Um. Yeah. Do you want to state something on the record that... So during the meeting, well, the other thing I'm, is, I'm looking uh, to whether it specifically talks in here about the fact that... Um, so 
some of these basins. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, some of that's in there. There's no mention of this. Um, I don't know. Is this a, a petition of some sort that's been presented to us that has a lot of people who are not a part of this subdivision signing on to? Um, yeah. If you look on the page, I, the, the problem I have with that is that maybe I'm just talking about it. You know, I'm fine with having it in the. The packet is, you know, a lot of these folks aren't abutters to the project. I don't know which are abutters and which aren't abutters. Maybe I should say that. Well, so maybe, maybe they're all abutters. I don't know. Um, oh, so maybe it should be a letter from residents? Or? Yeah. Because they're not technically abutters. They're not within the 300 feet. I'm not so close. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so I think that we don't necessarily want to get into a discussion about Dominic's Way at this point because we have, ha that. have the public <clears throat> hearing for that is being pushed off at the request of the applicant. Um, so the question is whether or not having the letter in here and the minutes in here the way they are um, create any um, Right. False impressions were a false right. record, but I do right. think the letter was submitted, so that's yeah. an accurate record. Can I get the motion that we change the title of the that addition to what I made the motion to to the letter from the residents of Gorham Ave, Fairview Ave, and Fresher Ave, instead of a father? Oh. Okay. So, yeah. so um, Matthew, where you say letter from a butters on page eight nine. Yeah, the top of the 10 and 11. Yeah. Instead of saying letter from a Butters, it should say letter from residents of Gorham Ave, Fairview Ave, and Thrasher Ave, which is the way it was stated in the motion to include the letter. Um, and also takes into account the fact that not all of the people signing on to that letter are a Butters. I would also note for the record that I see that one of my clients is, is a. Um, had signed this letter, um, Lori Cook and Jason Cook. Um, I, I don't feel that, I mean, I'm not getting a financial um, gain off of whether I approve the subdivision or not, so I don't think I have to recuse myself, but I do want to sort of let you guys know for the record. Um, I haven't gone through the list in any other detail, but just that jumped out of me. So with that change to the letter being titled Letter from Residents of Gorham Ave, Fairview Ave, and Thrasher Ave, with that being changed at the top of pages 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16? Yeah, and if it's okay, I'll, it'll just say Letter from residents of Gorham Ave, Fairview Ave, and Thrasher Ave regarding proposed Dominic subdivision, Dominic by subdivision number 1801. Yes, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, with that revision to the minutes? I make a motion to approve the minutes of Monday, April 2nd. Uh, second? Anybody want to make a second? As amended? As amended? Second. All those in favor of approving the minutes as amended? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you. We have approved minutes for April 2nd. Um, other administrative matters. Our next board meeting is Monday, April 30th. We'll see that we have two of the hearings that were meant for tonight are to be moved to April 30th, so that will be a fairly large meeting. Matt is taking vacation the week of June 11th to 15th, as previously discussed. He bought plane tickets, so we can't change our minds. <laughs> He's pushing his other vacation back from early July to late July and may take a vacation in September given the fact that he's accumulating some vacation. But it need to. Um, we have now scheduled public hearings for Libby's Lane subdivision, which is off of Taylor Street, right? That's right. That's the one that's uh, just right next to Bristol Estates, actually, right next to 73. And the Wolfstan Field House are now both scheduled for May 14th. We've now sent out legal ads to be published on Friday. So the, those matters are, public hearings are underway, and I, especially for the Wolfstone, I think it was happy to hear that. 
We received a public records request from uh, someone regarding the 346 Washington uh, project for a recording of the board's March 19th me meeting, and Matt has given a copy of the audio file to Sabrina. All public records requests for our planning board are going through Sabrina and the Board of Selectmen's office because uh, they are the people responsible for the town for responding to public records requests. And people were going to a bunch of different town boards and asking for similar things, and it was very inefficient in terms of town resources. So Sabrina is shepherding that and just sort of getting the information from Matthew and other boards and committees is needed. Um, so there's a new um, compliance form in our folders. It's not a new rule, but it's a new compliance form because we have not really focused on this rule as much, but it's an important one. A certification. It's a certification pursuant to General Law Chapter 39, Section 23DA, where the undersigned member missed a single session of a hearing. So when we have public hearings, a planning board member is allowed to miss a single me meeting and still vote on the hearing, the matter at issue, provided you fill out the certification. If you miss two sessions of a public hearing, you can't vote. So, that's um, this is the certification that we should all get familiar with and utilize as needed because sometimes public hearings go on for more than one or two weeks and it becomes a little more difficult on the bigger projects to sort of um, keep, maintain a form and maintain that rule. And that, sorry, that was sent to me by Carolyn Murray of KP Law, so that's the, yeah, it's coming from the town council. Those of us who attend every meeting can be known. Exactly. <laughs> um, we had a complaint from a neighbor about 204 Center Street about a for sale sign being posted because she feels that, the neighbor feels that um, the current owners may not be actually building the buildings, but just putting it for sale and feels like maybe there wasn't complete. Um, I noticed that the, the, the owners weren't forthcoming to the board. I don't know if we should ask them to come in and just give us an update on what's happening with that project. I think they did come to us. They came to us. Are we talking about the building? Yeah, they right. came to us asking for the apartments on the second floor. Right, and they have to go through ZBA. But they didn't come to us about selling the project. Well, they, they're they going to build a building that's going to be for sale. They didn't say anything that's going to lease it. Oh, um, I see what you're saying. The point is is that they have to go through ZBA to see if they get approved for the um, occupation, a residential occupation above the, above the which should take time. Because they have issues, they have to probably come back with new designs for the septic systems, new designs for the parking, a new design on the whole footprint. If they even go that route. If they, if they can go that route. I think the neighbor maybe was concerned that once they got permission from the planning board to build these two new, these two buildings, yeah. um, that then they're just going to sell the property. They could do that, And too. then some, the future buyer then will have the right, I guess, to build the two. Yeah, yeah, but, that, that, yeah. but that is the way it works. If you have site plan approval, the ownership is really not any of our business. Yeah. Um, I mean, whether there are other well, things that constrain ownership of that property, yeah. I don't know because it's already a condo. Well, the, the planning board signed a foundation permit for those two sites. And they've already been clearing and preparing the sites. So I think what's happening is they, <laughs> they have taken and looked out to try to see who would occupy those buildings, and that's when they came in with the housing portion, which have already bitten that apple on that site. And so, for me, I have an issue with it. I have a huge issue with it. Because <laughs> the 50% has already been built. Exactly. I have less of an issue with it if we get affordable it, housing. It's not affordable, number one. In fact, I'm going to tell you right now, in the red, that we just re pulled out. There are no two bedrooms. What do you mean there are no two bedrooms? And where? In the ray, you have 1.5 bedrooms, and the applicant brought in two bedroom units. 
Now, I understand two-bedroom units are easier to rent, to sell, to sell, but I will tell you, I had the AG's office in my kitchen when this first came down, all right? And I'm going to tell you, they'll be down again. Yeah, well, that was the, the part of the bylaw that made it a mixed use. And, and actually, 220 Center Street, they had to go to the ZBA to get to get those variances for those extra bedrooms. Right. They went through the, the motions of the, of the process, but... But between the, the commercial and the residential, I don't know they have enough property to have it a... Um, well, just, for the, the, just for the tree. Previously approved projects right. were done. Before and it met, we, before before it we and it met, it met the spirit of the bylaw. Right. And that's what we wanted. Right. So to go back and, and got, it. got it and ask for residential use, that just doesn't, it doesn't sit well with me. But to the extent the concern that <coughs> was raised is that they may be selling the whole property that's, well, then again, we don't, we don't, we, if someone goes and builds commercial that complies with the site plan, then we don't have any jurisdiction to say you can't sell it. Exactly. Yeah. It's the same as the um, Yama Hospital. He, he ended up selling most of that project and just completed a small portion. Well, yeah. Nothing yeah. says well, he can't sell. We can well, use. And there was, there was, a, there was a, a previous owner of 220 Center Street. It was the same previous owner of 205 Center Street. who right. sold it to these guys to develop. Right. right. <laughs> But in general, the planning boards, I mean, although they were trying to change this with the Airbnb legislation recently, planning boards control use and how a property is used. We don't control ownership. Right. Right. Condos can be created, and we don't have any jurisdiction over that, so it's use doesn't change. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, all right, so there's no reason to bring him in because if he's selling it, he's selling it, and right now we don't have anything to do. Just putting out there someone's interest in the building being built. Okay. Uh, screening of the Habermach Solar Project. We have a couple minutes yeah. that we might as well try to address whether or not we're going to do a site walk. Are we going to look at the estimate? Are we going to try to build something? We have Tom's estimate. It's a lot to screen, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I put it, a couple of Tom's estimates in your photos yeah. there. Somewhere. It is a lot to screen, and we don't have enough money to do it well, in a very big way. <laughs> Here's a question. I just had a thought. I don't know if this is something that can be done, but if we, since we, I feel like we kind of got rushed through this process, yes, and I'm wondering if maybe it makes sense to go to like the board of selectmen who are kind of like lighting a fire under us and saying, "Hey, look, this isn't enough money. We should have asked for a lot more." Um, do you guys want to kick in some dough <laughs> to beautify the spot right. that, with yeah. the money that's coming out of the right. solar project? Twelve thousand dollars. So we have 25, right? right? Well, we'd like to ask that somebody who's responsible for that fence also clean up that fence. I mean, right. They put right. the project in and we agreed to it with the idea that there'd be a little bit of money yeah. to make that area look nice despite right. putting in that big solar field. Well, the town property, right? It's property now, right? They have jurisdiction on them, uh, over anything within that fence. So we've got a uh, an estimate of almost thirty-eight thousand dollars for this, and we've got twenty-five. But is that thirty-eight thousand installed, or is that thirty? Yeah, labor. Okay. I think the pro I think the issue is is that is that how many one how many houses do we have on uh, uh, across the street? Mm -hmm. But it's yes. not just the houses across well, the street. Well, here's the problem: is that you have. People are going to pass back and forth on that roadway, and you know, uh, realistically, I think we should be concerned with the people who actually live there, not the people traveling, because you're not going to you're not going to fix the following. And so, if you concentrate on the people who actually are the residents there, then you think we have enough money. Then you may be able to take and concentrate in those areas the sight lines that they have and limit the the amount of fill that you of, of material that needs to fill those spots. And then in the future... Make the argument to the Board of Selectmen that they should care about the people passing because it's an image and, of and, our town. And the issue is, is that you've got to spend the money before two years. Okay. So you've got a limited time to get it done. You know, or you're going to lose the 25 grand too. Alright, so how about we put it on an agenda? Oh, no. Sorry. I'm sure. 800 feet is the frontage. Right. 
and we will put a plant around the juniper and the rhododendron and every other so we have 80 plants. The total cost of the plants is basically 15 grand. The rest of it's labor. Now the labor I carry would be if you hire someone and you have to pay them the rent. You're not suggesting the boy would have to pay the whole bunch. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm suggesting Boy Scouts? That we go to CPW and ask them for help because I, I understand. You don't. You guys don't have any money yet. Well, first off, here's the issue, here's the other issues. You don't necessarily know. We need to know exactly where the membrane from the uh, uh, trash oh, absolutely. is yeah. and where's a safe spot to actually plant. All right, so you actually need to delineate that line, right? Yeah. And then you may not, by delineating that line and knowing where that edge is, all right, it may be closer to those trees than we think it is. And now you're planting, whatever you're going to plant is going to be under the cover of trees during the summertime. Mm -hmm. Where the outer bodies may not, there may not be a good spot for them because they kind of need a little bit more sun. Whereas the roadies wouldn't mind it so much. Correct. And so, you know, it's a catch-22 here. I mean, we don't, we need either, well, the track, we need them to tell us where that line is. Yeah, well, that should well, that, that'll be part of the installation. Right. But I, I also, I carry the plants that uh, the water damage are 50 bucks a piece. They're not very big. The junipers are, I think I carry 8 to 10 foot. It's going to take them years to grow. Well, like I said, they ought to fill in by the time the, uh, the solar panels rise out. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it may have been easier to take and have the chain link fence that they last. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. But, that, but that's not very pretty. Well, I think the, road, the roadies should. The road right. may start out slow, but they should. Like, that's that's uh, well, we have to feed it forty bucks a foot, it's thirty-two thousand dollars. It's the same cost. Well, the, what to do roadies the whole way? No, no. to do the uh, fence fence. Oh, I see what you're saying. Should, I, should have them do it. Fence is straight up, straight away, and then but it has to be pretty tall to roll off the fence anyway. Yeah, yeah. but the, the elevation of those, <laughs> those solar panels is pretty high. It's like you're it's not going to block it all. You're not going to block it with a fence. No, I think the greenery, though, will at least, I mean, look better, yeah. like visually, it creates well, a, some... Well, let's see if we can get this done for $25,000 with some help from the DPW. Oh, no. from the Boy Scouts. Okay, somebody. Yeah. I mean, if we can get volunteers to do it, we can buy the plants to the park for 15 grand. We also, I carry, uh, I carry almost five grand for police detail. And we're still going to have to be capped on the street. We may not have to. We may be able to work on the face size. Yeah. You know, you should be able to. Yeah. Where's the police yeah, detail? Yeah, no police no, detail. Turn the street. Turn the street. Yeah. The yeah How do we get the project started? If Slowly. only we had a, a DPW commission. Slowly. I would, uh, that's why I would concentrate on the seven houses first. Well, we should, we should also look to and we'll find out if we're supposed to be notifying them or what was the procedure of this. So, the, the other thing we have is does it have to go out to bid? It's over 25 grand. Well, it's it's all what we do. It depends on if you put it out like that. You can put it out in $5,000 sections. Say, you get seven homes. You can put it out, you can put it you out. You put just the plants themselves out. You can put it out for $24,999. And get away with all, all the bid. It used to be three, three prices. But if we were going to do that, I'd want the board of selectmen to take some Oh, absolutely. Oh, no, no, that's not us. So my, my question is, should we ask Ed or somebody from the board of selectmen's office to come in and talk to us and put this on as an agenda? Yeah. yeah. And invite yeah. the members of the public to come in as well. Because if they if we make decisions on this without members, members of the public being able to come in and... Yeah, I think that's... that's I mean, they may... The members of the public, in the, we don't know if they're, if they're having a problem with this right now. Should they be opposed? No, the people who are affected by it, right across the street. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 Um, or do we throw it out there for the entire town? Well, if we put it on a public agenda item, then it is the whole town can come in. Right. Right? I mean, it's just not, it's not a public hearing, per se. I don't think we need to hold a public hearing and go through the expense of a, public, a formal public hearing. But well, I do think we, we have, have to the, have it as a noticed item on the agenda so that people or have a chance we, to Or we can have the selectmen do it. 
and, we and, go there. And we go there. We might want to notify the opponent of that. Yes. Yeah. So we don't So just do, nice, just do a nice just do a nice letter. Yeah. Right across the yeah. I, I think they should be notified that there's yeah. something that we're talking about that. And, yeah. I mean, we can't get in the habit of always having to send letters to the embedders for everything we do. We it's just, only seven. <laughs> it's only seven. But if we do it here, it's just a courtesy. It's the right to use it in case, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, or we ask the board selectmen to do it. If, they're, if it's their meeting, let's ask them to do it. So the question, um, I guess, Matthew, you and I can get in touch with yeah. Sabrina and talk to her about either us going to their meeting or them coming to our meeting to talk about the screening of the solar facility and the bidding process and the process of making sure that we find out if there's any funds anywhere that can help us make this well, more right yeah, to the neighbors. more workable. More workable. All right, okay. so I'll check to see if we can get on a selectman's agenda in May or June. Uh, or if possible. they can get on ours. Yeah. I understand some volunteers. Um, <laughs> yeah, the selectman can, can do the whole the assessor has an issue with the subdivision of the Palmer Lane. Yeah, that's that might be kind of trivial. It's just it's just sort of FYI. Those two letters. Yeah, one is the Yeah, one is the Form A and one is the subdivision. It doesn't have anything to do with it. It's just I mean, it's, it seems like the applicant so the people kind of messed up in terms of their ownership. It's ownership of the separate parcels. Yeah, so the assessors can't actually process it. I mean, it's, it's been done at the Register of Deeds, but the assessors can't process it until they figure out the ownership. And, and that's, I'm, I'm kind of surprised. The property, not us. It's outside of our outside Yeah. Of our okay. People will get paid if that's it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then I'm not going to worry about it. Um, the question is whether we should offer Donna Lane subdivision option to request extension of deadline for completion. I thought we were getting out of the habit of reaching out to subdivision owners that it was their responsibility to follow their deadlines. That goes back years. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's. Yeah, I, I just want wanted to, to let you know that's all. Yeah, I don't think it's, responsibility. it's their responsibility. I think yeah. it's their responsibility to come in because our concern is that we keep continuing. Subdivision? Yeah, the one. Is that the one you reached out to? It's off a of grain lane or uh, yeah. yeah. No, it expires and expires to yeah. one. Yeah, I mean it's not it's built. Such an old one, I don't think we should keep especially for ones that are like more. Yeah. Well, yeah. First off, you don't you don't call them, don't say anything. If they don't send a letter in, then the, then the board doesn't have to act on it after the two years is gone. Yeah. Yeah, I mean our concern too, and I think we want to take this for the record, is that um, subdivision rules and regs, uh, ADA regs, all sorts of regs change over time. And if you just have a subdivision that gets continued into infinity, our concern is that yeah. it would need a fresh look anyway. Yeah, there's nothing that was ever done, constructed, altered on that property yeah. for that subdivision. Yeah. And it, it, it only it only had uh, barely uh, makes it based on an old point of roadway. Right. 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 That was actually owned by the two abundance if you wanted to take. Um, if they want to take action. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so we're not going to do it. We're, we're all in agreement on that. Peter's construction site inspection estimates for 230 Water and 246 Washington are in your folders. Um, should we request deposits to the engineering review account to cover these before signing the building permits? Matthew, you want to tell us what your... Yeah, I mean, I think the answer is probably yes because they're both... Both those engineering accounts are like down to like maybe a thousand or something. Um, we would just, um, I mean, the board I think had told me you, you wanted the estimates from Peter. It sounds like the board wants Peter to do site inspections, which Peter is, has told me he's fine with because it's a good idea. Um, and so, you know, I think the estimate for one is maybe 4,000. So 227 Street is one of them? No, 230 water. 230 water. Oh, 230 water. Yeah. 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 Respect the stormwater system to, you know, especially in terms of neighboring properties or just in general to make sure. How much is in the uh, Water Street account now? I forget, but I think it's like a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars. So they would need to bump it up a bit. And which I can inform them, like, you know, we just need a, a bit more. Seven thousand. With the work. I think seven thousand is three forty six Washington. So what is it like three thousand? Is that such a maybe four thousand? Four thousand. I mean the three forty six Washington, that's a huge site. Well just just let them know and let them know that we need the money for the yeah. yeah. They get it back if we don't use it. Exactly. And for Smith and Sons, I mean 
given the legal situation, who knows when he's been actually doing construction. Uh, Peter also is wondering if the board wants him to do inspections of the cleanup for 346 Washington, which I guess is sort of separate. I think, it's outside, of, I think it's outside of his uh, ability, number one. I, I, think, I, I think that's an EPA uh, matter, not necessarily a state matter. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, it would be one thing if there was I think we have some time to contemplate that one, too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, it's now 8 o'clock. I'll note that on our agenda we had a public hearing for the proposed definitive subdivision entitled Dominic's Way, located at 56 Gore Ave consisting of three single-family houses. It was continued from March 19, 2018 and April 2, 2018. And we've um, been asked to continue that public hearing to April 30th? Uh, the two dates Matt gave me were May 14th and the 21st, and I uh, checked with the client, and he was out of state as his attorney, and said May 14th is fine. Unless your agenda is full, and we'll just slide down. All right, so May 14th, is that? Uh, yeah, so this is going to be difficult. I mean, May 14th um, is going to be the first public hearings for Libby's Lane and Wolf's Den. Um, 21st is okay. Is the 21st okay? 21st is okay. 21st. Actually, let me think for a minute. He said he's gone again on the 19th. He has some project he's working on. Okay. That's, should have my emails with me. But I um, remember him saying that today. And I gave him a choice and he said 14th because the 19th he was gone. Okay, so the 14th. The issue is that we already have two public hearings. I mean, we could. Uh, you can go to the beginning of June. That doesn't. I think that's going to. Impact anything? No. Truthfully, no. What is the first week of, first meeting in June? Yes, yeah, so I think that's uh, June 4th, I believe. Just um, make sure that there's no. Uh, that the time. This is a long time. We need, to, if we need an extension of time. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, we get a letter. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep on. I mean, I keep on top of it pretty carefully. Yeah. Otherwise, it gets up by the way. Yeah, yeah, same yeah. thing. Also, pretty Steve. Yeah, I'm going to get a little bit of 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 a little over why did it they, they pull that back away from that road he, he uh, honestly he's just kind of brought everything to a temporary stop i think he's contemplating you know, yeah well as he re now realizes it costs as much to build 10 lot subdivision as it does a two lot sometimes so i think he's he's rethinking his economics so the beginning of june i don't think we'll phase in, in the least Okay. Do, do we need a um, request for an extension? Or? That's a, yeah, that's a right. Paul just mentioned. Yeah, I mean, I think I can check right now, but I think we're okay for a while. And I can always, we can always take care of that yeah, in May. Uh, we, we, we'll make sure. Yeah, okay. we'll make sure. All right, so why don't we put it on for June 4th? What, what time? Because we do need to continue no, into a date. We need the second and fourth one. Uh, I think we probably want to meet June fourth because I'll be in I'll be in Paris this the second Monday of June. So if we meet on the eleventh, we miss um, we lose we lose Matthew, okay. which is why our meeting was getting moved to the fourth. And I may never come back from Paris. So, you <laughs> so can we do the fourth? Sure. Yeah, the fourth is wide open. And what time? Six forty-five. Six forty-five on June fourth. Do we have a motion to continue this? To to 6.45 on June 4th. So a little short. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, wait, Aye. do we have a second? I'm sorry. Yeah. I said, yeah. Okay. I said, sure. So which one I thought which was moving, which was second. But take it there. <laughs> so the public hearing for the proposed subdivision at Dominic's Way is continued to June 4th at 6.45 p.m. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. <laughs>
Uh oh, we're in trouble now. <laughs> the attorney was just. Yeah, two. <laughs> well, I don't have one. Of course, you're a crazy man. So let me just see what else we have real quick here because we didn't notice our executive session until 8.15. So we'll see if we can get this right. Um, we did have a situation in town hall in the last week where someone had, was somewhat abusive with Matthew in terms of language. In, mm -hmm. Yeah. So we just um, made a plan with the Board of Selectmen's office for him to get help from Sabrina and obviously we would ask that Members of the town don't scream at our staff. Of course not. Um, and I'm going to scream from the community to beat them up. <laughs> and um, oh. I just wanted to does. let the board know that that had happened and that it is being dealt with as best we can. No, we agree. Okay. But I would suggest you get Rose and the DPW. She'll scrape. It's really more to have a witness there. Stuff that's happening. It was, most, it was more, um, I mean, there's one person sort of abusive here, but then there's more over the phone that it was more of a serious, I guess you'd say abusive talk. I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, what, what, that's what they did, actually. <laughs> um, we have some materials on the case involving 346 Washington Street. Can I give a little piece of advice? If, if you have somebody who's yelling and screaming at you, stop talking and let them just keep going, and they will eventually talk themselves out when they realize you're not responding. Is that is that customer service one? Customer service. You let them talk. Now they do at the bank. Put the whole nub of your coffee. <laughs> so just notice that there are materials in your folder, both for 346 Washington Street, including the appeal to the ZBA in 346 Washington Street, and the case materials in your folders for 240 and 258 Oak Street in the field murky dispute. Um, we also have copies of the open meeting law complaint from Danielle Marco in your um, folders. We have some other things that I think we have five more minutes. So Matt suggests is um, Matt is talked to a couple other planning boards, and apparently they do not read the conditions out loud for site plan owner subdivision decisions. They merely say. The conditions as written, or something to that effect. Or something yeah. to that effect. We took both the time we went so out. We said that's better than the war. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's not this change. Yeah. So think about whether we want to alter our procedure on that. I don't know that we need a long discussion about that tonight. Um, I think what we have to do is have a preliminary type of. We actually have something that we can do for it, too. We usually we do. We've got to do that as we go. Right? Well, but when we when we vote the conditions, we usually have the it's draft finished. there, it's and we finished. just literally spend 10 minutes yeah. reading yeah. it into the record. Yeah. I think also in the past, we had a, a template of conditions, and they weren't always written up with the additions to them or the right. amendments to them. So well, that's, been, that's been good about doing that, though, ahead of time. So we've got them. So it's already in there. It's in there. Or, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's definitely crucial to have the, the, that. Well, you've got the waivers. Project. The there, waivers yeah. are all there, yeah. and everything else is all Which there. We, we used to use kind of a templated time, thing, so. and then we would, you know, we verbally put those waivers in the, and the changes. Sounds good. Yeah, that does sound, that sounds great. <laughs> so, um, I don't know if Council has any opinion on that. Do we need to? It's something I've, I can talk to Carolyn about if you'd like. Okay. I mean, if we're about to change our rules, I don't want to do it in a way that's going to cause a problem. But it seems like if other planning boards are not reading their complete decisions in, and they're just, you know, we issue the decision, it becomes a matter of public record. <laughs> it's just the um, how much time we take at the planning board to literally read through two pages of usually with, with a lot of specific conditions. Matthew has noticed that we have seventy-eight thousand dollars sitting in road bonds for Pembroke Woods. Yes. No. And the the this is another one where for the deadline for completion expired in two thousand eight. And the question is whether so because they the 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now they built phase one. They were they were going to build. I had approval phase two. And they never did. Doesn't mean that they can't. Does it count as one where they've made substantial use of the 
of the approval and therefore they still have the right to finish phase two. We'd have to check with council on that, but the question is should no, Matt... Was, if I remember correctly, it's two separate owners. Right. So, so two separate owners, too. Yeah, then it looked like the approval expired. Yeah. So should then, we look into returning those funds to the developer? I don't think the developer is no longer. But just, just to add to that, I mean, so this is, just so you understand, this is the road bond for the Pembroke Woods subdivision, not not oh. the site plans, but the because I don't think we even take road bond for any site plans. So this, I mean, I guess it was originally done as a subdivision when they were like building the roads or something and subdividing yeah, it. Was, and then, was, and then, and then was, each of the apartments was the site plan. We had issues with the drain drains and uh, how many times do we go out there for the for the water that's into the culvert into the uh, catch basins and. But the other, I mean, the other, I'm oh, sorry, the other tricky thing. I mean, yeah. it expired in two thousand. But, but the question is, we're sitting there with money in the account. What good is it doing? If it we're is, spending money, should we have gone after that money to cover some of those problems? No, 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 no. no. We haven't spent that money because that money, I believe, was there. Remember, they went from, from, from building the apartments to all of a sudden going on the other side of the street to going to be building prior to the subdivision. It was going to be another set of 125 units, all right, and then there's also the roadway, uh, there's actually something going on, I think, behind that property that goes up into Marshville, where Marshville is. Yeah, we had something come before us on that in the last year or so. Correct. So, all that money was hooked to that roadway. They haven't completed the roads. They haven't done, finished the process where they give us a nice book and all that. Right. But should we be asking for it? I mean, right now we're just kind of in... in in, um, it sits it's there. Let's sit there. It's it's there. Because they will come, they will come along, and someone will pick up that project, and and you're going to have money to actually be there to look at the, the engineer to take you all over. Whereas I had all the asphalt need to be redone. For right. Way more than seventy eight thousand. Right. Mm -hmm. That might cover <laughs> engineering. <laughs> I mean, it's tricky because it expired in 2008, but then again, it, it never expired. Four four yeah, 204 Center had expired. That was the ZBA. I believe the ZBA approved the 125 units, and therefore it is an approved use on that property. Mm. Okay. All right. So it is um, coming up on 815. I just want to see if there's one other thing. Um, so. There's there is a question as to whether or not we should put on our agenda. A couple people have brought it up, and apparently it came up a meeting. Andy was was attending as our representative to the capital study committee. Capital, capital study. Yeah, capital planning study. Capital planning study committee about digital billboards in town and whether they should be admitted permitted. Um, it's not something I think we should discuss tonight as an administrative matter. It's my question to the board is whether we should put whether that's something we need to or want to discuss at a later meeting. I, and I throw that in with bylaws. I'm on the sign committee, and I think that we have uh, it's no study committee. It's, 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 it's a sign bylaw review committee. Oh, okay. Um, I didn't know that. And we met once, and it was they were everybody was panicked about um, the grain store. With their electronic sign, and they didn't want most of the people in the room, you know, didn't want any other like signs like that around. But you guys didn't do any work on crafting a bylaw. Mm -hmm. No, that was it. We just talked about it. You just talked about it. Well, because part of my question is whether this should be part of a broader discussion about whether we want to review our bylaws and make but recommendations. We don't have jurisdiction over the signs anywhere right, so we but. refer to the sign we didn't make. But we do have, <laughs> we do have jurisdiction Only. over suggesting changes to the bylaws. Ah, okay. Right, it's just as own changes. Just remember something. Anytime, anytime that anything's ever been put in, it's always been done. The best way to circumvent <coughs> what we're going to do. If whatever we're going to put in there, you better be prepared to have it all over the time. Well, no, the other question <laughs> is whether or not, you know, our bylaws, for example, don't have, they could contain a statement, like some towns do, that says, not a lot of no, that says the ZBA cannot issue a variance for use. To their use. And we don't have that restriction in our bylaws. Should we do this or not? 
Yeah, now we're at 815. So think about that. We won't put it on an agenda now. It doesn't sound like we have enough interest in doing so, but we can talk about that later. Um, it just came up today. All right, I can't find the word. Let us make a motion. It's, it's on our agenda. I lost my All right. Okay. We've been asked. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I, no, I, the chair usually. Um, okay. I think I've got the. So we are planning to go chair. into executive session pursuant to General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A1, to discuss, deliberate, and take action with respect to an open meeting law complaint filed against the Planning Board by Danielle Markle on April 12, 2018 and executive session pursuant to general law chapter 38 section 21a3 to discuss strategy with respect to litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the public body specifically the board will discuss and take appropriate action with respect to the matter of maria Karras et al versus pembroke planning board at all length court case number 18 Dash MISC dash 000181 regarding the property located at 346 Washington Street in Pembroke and with respect to the matter of Grissom Park Company LLP versus Planning Board at all land court case number 18 dash MISC 000154 regarding the property located at 240 and 258 Oak Street in Pembroke and the chair does so declare that having a discussion in an open session would have a detrimental effect on the town's litigating position. The, the chair having so declared, um, we need to take a roll call vote as to whether the board agrees to go into executive session to discuss these matters. So, Paul Whitman. Aye. Dan Taylor. Aye. Jim Noon. Aye. Tom Irving. Aye. Andy Wendell. Aye. Rebecca Coletta. Aye. Okay, so the. Is there a second? I'll we... second the motion. All right, so Dan is making the motion. Paul is seconding the motion. Dan, did you make the motion? Yeah, you read the motion. Oh, you read I did. Okay. You read the motion. Let's just make the motion. For executive session. Okay. So I'll Paul, second you seconded it. Let's redo the roll call just to be clear. Paul Whitman. Aye. Daniel yes. Taylor. Aye. James Noon. Aye. Thomas Irving. Aye. Andrew Wandell. Aye. Rebecca Coletta. Aye. All right, we are now in executive session. You also, I guess need to announce whether or not you're going to. Or did you read it? Oh, uh, like, who, no. Who's going to remain here? There is no intention of coming back into public session for any reason other than to adjourn the meeting. 